Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ms. Skoken. We're in section 8-4, Angles of Elevation and Depression. Our objective is to solve problems involving angles of elevation and angles of depression. And vocabulary, angle of elevation, angle of depression. We've got three warm-up questions, and I'm going to ask you to pause the video now while you work on those. Turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers. Bring any questions about these warm-up problems to class, and we'll go over them. Let's move on now. An angle of elevation is the angle formed by the horizontal line and a line of sight to a point above the line. In the diagram, angle one is the angle of elevation from the tower T to the plane P. You can see that we start at the horizontal line, the line of sight, and we go upward. Elevate means go up. So you start at the horizontal and go upward for an angle of elevation. An angle of depression is the angle formed by the horizontal line and a line of sight to a point below the line. In this diagram, angle two is the angle of depression from the plane P to the tower T. Since all horizontal lines are parallel, angle one and angle two are congruent by the alternate interior angles theorem. That means that the angle of elevation from one point is congruent to the angle of depression from the other point. It's almost like they come in pairs. So we're gonna use angle of elevation, angle of depression to solve quite a few problems. But first, in example one, let's get some practice just identifying the angle of elevation and angle of depression. Example one, classify each angle as an angle of elevation or an angle of depression. So our first question, A, is asking us about angle three. Angle three is the angle between the horizontal that starts at the bird and goes downward towards the man with the binoculars. So it's the angle between the horizontal and the diagonal between the man and the bird. Let's take a look at angle, oh, so it is an angle of depression. Now let's take a look at angle four. Angle four is the angle that starts at the man with the binoculars and goes upward towards the bird. So notice that it is between the horizontal line of sight from the man with the binoculars looking upwards toward the bird. That means that angle four is an angle of elevation. Question C is asking us about angle five. And angle five, once again, starts out at the line of sight of the man with the binoculars and the horizontal line there and goes downward towards the top of the tree. So that is an angle of depression. Next is angle six. From the top of the tree going horizontally, we see the beginning of angle six, and it goes upward toward the diagonal that looks at the man with the binoculars. So it is also an angle of elevation. I also added in angles seven and eight. And angle seven is an angle between the line of sight of the man downwards towards the top of the tree and the vertical, not the horizontal. So angle seven is neither an angle of a depression nor an angle of elevation. Angle eight is also an angle with the vertical, not the horizontal. So it is neither an angle of elevation nor an angle of depression. Both angles of elevation and depression must be an angle with the horizontal. Okay, let's take a look at example two now. Finding distances by using an angle of elevation. The Seattle Space Needle casts a 67 meter shadow. Automatically, we know that that's going to give us a right triangle with the shadow being the horizontal. Okay, it goes on to say, if the angle of elevation from the tip of the shadow to the top of the space needle is 70 degrees, so that's this angle right here, the tip of the shadow to the top of the space needle is 70 degrees, how tall is the space needle? And when we get an answer, we're gonna round it to the nearest meter. So we've got our setup. We've got an angle, we've got one side length on our right triangle, so we know we're set up perfectly for Sokotoa. We can now label our right triangle with hypotenuse, adjacent, and opposite. 
since we have the adjacent and we want the opposite, we're going to be using the tangent of the 70 degree angle. The tangent of 70 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent, so that means it's going to be the height over 67. To solve for height, we multiply both sides by 67. And that's going to give us a final height to the nearest meter of 184 meters. Next, you have a now you try. And I'm going to recommend that you start by drawing your right triangle and labeling it and reading the question a couple of times to make sure that you have labeled everything correctly and that you're using the correct trigonometric function. See you back in a minute when you're ready to check your work. So we found that the horizontal distance between the plane and the airport is 4,601 feet. And as always, if you have any questions about any of these, please bring them to class with you. Let's take a look at another example now. Example number three reads, an ice climber stands at the edge of a crevasse that is 115 feet wide. The angle of depression from the edge where she stands to the bottom of the opposite side is 52 degrees. How deep is the crevasse at this point? Round to the nearest foot. Sounds to me like we're gonna need a triangle diagram. So here's our right triangle with our climber. We know that it's 115 feet wide, and we know that the angle of depression is 52 degrees. And when we wanna find how deep it is, that means we're finding this, this opposite side. So that's opposite the 52 degree angle. We know that this is our hypotenuse, and we know that this is our adjacent side. Okay, so we are trying to find the opposite. We have the adjacent. That means we're using the tangent. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent, so the tangent of 52 degrees is going to be equal to the opposite over 115. Our units are going to be feet, and of course, in order for us to find the opposite, we multiply both sides by 115, and then we leave the rest to our calculator, and we're going to end up with the depth of the crevasse as 147 feet when we round to the nearest foot. You might have guessed that now you've got to now you try. So as always, read the question carefully, set up a diagram, and then turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers. See you back in a minute. This question had a little bit of a twist to it because the angle of depression is not actually part of our triangle, but the alternate interior angle to that one is. And the reason that we know that we can use that alternate interior angle is because we've got horizontal lines that are always parallel. Remember, all horizontal lines are parallel to one another, so those alternate interior angles are congruent, which means we can use the seven degree angle next to our fire. All right. If you have some questions about this one, let me know. But this is actually, these two are really, really good questions to practice as you get ready for the word problems that you're going to see on the test. Speaking of word problems, let's take a look at example four on the next page for a couple more problems. Example four reads, an observer in a lighthouse is 69 feet above the water. He sights two boats in the water directly in front of him. The angle of depression to the nearest boat is 48 degrees. The angle of depression to the other boat is 22 degrees. What is the distance between the two boats? And that distance is going to be right here. And when we finally get an answer, we're going to round it to the nearest foot. All right, so we have a very interesting looking diagram, but we don't see our right triangles very easily. So let's draw in some right triangles with the horizontal from each of our two boats. I've drawn in a pink segment so that we can see the triangle, but I'm going to shade it in because it's going to make it a lot easier for us to look at. Our diagram is looking better already. We can see that pink triangle very clearly. We know it's a right triangle. And we also recognize that because uh, the horizontal lines are all parallel to one another, we could also put that 48 degree angle in right here with the horizontal. Okay, now let's draw in our right triangle to the other boat. Again, shading it in is going to make it a little bit easier for us to recognize what's going on in the diagram. We've got the problem completely set up now. The only thing that I want to do is I also want to remind you that we could have drawn in 
the 22 degrees with the horizontal on the bottom part of the diagram because of those alternate interior angles being congruent. The question is asking us to find the distance between the two boats, which is this distance. But to find that distance, we're going to have to do two steps. We're going to have to find this distance and subtract from it this distance, and that's going to give us the distance between the two boats. So we have a few more steps yet on this one, and what we're going to do is label our orange triangle. The orange triangle, we know that the hypotenuse, of course, is a diagonal, and this is the opposite. This is the adjacent. It's going to be the same thing for the pink triangle, where this is the adjacent and this is the opposite side. Now, go back to the very beginning of the question and remember that the lighthouse is 69 feet tall. That is the length of the opposite for both the orange and the pink triangles. So because we want the adjacent and we have the opposite, we're going to be using the TOA part of SOHCAHTOA. And that means we're using the tangent. So the tangent of 22 degrees is 69 over the adjacent. And using our algebra skills, we know that that means that the adjacent is going to be equal to 69 divided by tangent of 22 degrees. That's going to give us that orange length. So the orange adjacent length is 170.781 feet. Next, we need to find the adjacent of the pink triangle. So the tangent of 48 degrees is equal to 69, again, as the opposite over the adjacent. And that means the adjacent is equal to 69 divided by the tangent of 48 degrees. And our calculator work next gives us a distance of 62.128 feet. So we found the two adjacents, and the last thing that we need to do is to find the difference between them to get the distance between the two boats. So we're going to subtract 170.781 and 62.128, giving us, rounded to the nearest foot, 109 feet. That question might feel a little bit challenging, and it is because there are so many different steps involved. In order to give you some practice, of course, there's a now you try, which is next, and you're going to be pausing the video, working on that, starting with the very important diagram, and then turn the video back on when you're ready to check your work. Just a, a quick reminder that this is gonna be formatted very similarly to the one that we just worked on together. And if you have any questions about this, of course, we can discuss them and take a look at this one in class. See you back in a minute. Again, the magic in this question is all in the setup and a really good diagram is super helpful to knowing how to approach the, uh, the strategy to approach the problem. Okay, so that's it for the lesson. You are all set to begin homework. Bring any questions you have to class and I'll see you back in class.